Hey, did you come to this video because you want to learn more about funeral flowers? Well, you have come to the right place because I'm going to be explaining everything you need to know. video is going to be super duper informative for you if you're a beginner if you're doing a diy funeral flower job or you just want to expand your skills really so this video is going to be a sort of watch and learn today i'm making a dad funeral tribute which you can watch me do whilst i answer some commonly asked questions that i've had on youtube and give you some tips and tricks from my experience as well so just a quick little bit of background about me. I'm Gem and I own a floristry business in Staffordshire in the UK in England and I have run this business for seven years and I get funeral orders every single week so I've got a lot of experience in this field and I want to help you and teach you about the things that I would have wanted to know when I was a beginner and some commonly asked questions that I get on YouTube also. So hopefully I can cover the majority of those questions Questions. but if you do have any more questions please don't forget to subscribe and ask any questions that you like in the comment box down below I love answering all your questions let's help learn and grow together so the two main funeral tributes I do are coffin sprays or letters so this is a dad letter tribute and basically I'm just making some ribbon edge to go round all the outside of the letters. You can do the inside as well, I don't tend to do so, I just flower that. So I'm going to be doing the ribbon edge all around the D, the A and the other D. And to measure how much ribbon that we need, which I'll just pick up. So I've pleated this and if you would like to see how we pleat we do have a video and we will link that into the description and you can watch that after this video. So the amount of ribbon edging that you need with every letter is a la large arm stretch worth. So this is going to cover the whole of the outside of the D, the A and the other D and any letters that you are doing. Now, if you're doing this as a DIY job and you're not a florist, you can get the letter tributes off Amazon and you can also get this poly ribbon off Amazon as well. So this is poly ribbon. It's the easiest ribbon uh, to work with really because it creates really lovely pleats like this and it goes gets like fluffy at the bottom as well. So I'm just going to carry on doing that until I've got three arms length worth to go round every letter of my tribute. And the poly ribbon that I use is the APAC. It's got 100 yards, it's 91 meters. And yeah, this is in the red color. They do every single color, so don't worry. Okay, so I've now got my three arms length worth. So one, two and three so one arm length is going to fit one letter now we can just cut the end of this actually so we don't have all that ribbon coming off and getting in the way so i'm going to cut that down and then we need to soak our letters if you don't have like a big enough sink to soak the letters which not many people would have a sink this big um i just basically put the letters into the tap run the water over it until it is fully soaked another thing you can do is clean out your bath make sure there's no shampoo or body wash residue and then you can fill the bath up and soak it in there that will give it a really good soak but i'm just going to layer these on to the outside of the letters now if you want a more in-depth tutorial on this then uh, we will link uh, that video down in the description also. Now, I'm actually using these German or boss pins, some people call them, 
or you can if you've just got any like sewing pins or you can only get hold of just normal pins these ones are pearls i usually use those on like bridal bow case to bind them together you can use those but it's a bit more expensive and you don't really want to see the mechanics and you'll be able to see the pearls on the end more so i'm just going to go all around each letter in these Okay, and then that leads me to my first commonly asked question, which is how do I approach bereaved families and have consultations with them? Now, when I first started, and I first started having my first funeral consultations, I was so scared. I was scared that I was going to say the wrong thing or things that offended them. Now, it isn't, it really isn't that bad, seriously, and you'll just get used to it. Um, so how I approach the families is, I say, hello, is this Mrs. Hall? And they'll be like, yeah. And I'll say, how are you today? I don't ask them how they are because it's obvious. And then they'll tell you. And then I normally go, um, have you had a little think about what tribute you'd like for dad? So I never say your dad. I say dad because then they're instantly more comfortable with you. So, uh, even just taking that one word out. So that's the one thing that... I would say uh, to do really um, it just makes them feel more comfortable around you um, and then also let them take their time in what they are asking for and explain everything to them now that leads me on to my second asked question and that I'll just be one second so this is my funeral brochure now i used to have a massive funeral brochure full of so much work and when i gave it to the bereaved families they'd look through it and there was so much and it just got so confusing and they'll be like well how much is this style in uh, this sort of sized arrangement and i was it was just getting too confusing so i condensed everything down into a little book and basically i just have a little bit about me then coffin sprays now i've got like two price points in here if you can see so i've got bespoke and traditional so the, the traditional is a little bit cheaper than the bespoke because some families want to spend their money on like donations which is absolutely fine that's so understandable to like charities and then I have my single ended, I have my letters, so you can have white based or full flower if you want to add ribbon or flower sprays to them you can. And then my wreaths, my hearts, cushions, pillows, bespoke items and then that's it and that's super duper easy for me. Now I have actually made one of these guides as a template on Etsy which I will also leave in the description below. This has been my lifesaver. It's so simple to go through with bereaved families because it is so simple for them and simple for me to know what they're going on about. Um, and then just basically take your time with them, be patient with them and let them explain everything that they want for their loved ones. So then they go with peace of mind knowing that their flowers will be perfect on the day. And then so after I have got the flower order, I then will send them a confirmation email of everything that we went through and they can confirm everything, confirm the prices and then I will send them a formal email uh, through Square. So if you have the Square app at all, you don't actually need a physical card machine, just download the app. You can just write really, really quick and simple, easy invoices and send it to your customer's email. And then you can also pop the date on for when the invoice is due. So I always make sure that all my invoices are paid two days before so then i have peace of mind that it's all paid for and it's all ready to go as well okay and then so another question is uh, when do i deliver the flowers to the funeral home i always deliver my flowers by 9 a.m to the funeral home on the day of the funeral so i know all the flowers are there i don't have to stress about it that's the first thing i do because funeral flowers stress me out the most. I prioritise them the most as well. And then sometimes I will get a thank you for the funeral flowers. Or families don't tend to message really to say thank you. Which is absolutely fine. No news is good news anyway. Um, just make sure all your flowers are perfect and you are good to go. 
you get asked for a special request when you have another consultation with the bereaved families and it's something absolutely extraordinary and it's outside of your skills I would literally say no do you know how much stress that will put on you so basically I had a customer a couple of months ago message me two days before um, a funeral that they were planning to go on and wanted some flowers and they sent me this like magnificent intricate, intricate, intricate design and um, there's no way I could have done that the day before. <laughs> so I was like, I'm really sorry. Like, I, I wouldn't be able to do that in the time frame. And that's absolutely fine. Like, it is fine to say no. Don't take on too much work at all. You need to make sure that it's quality over quantity at all times. And that will really, really help you out in, your long, in the long run because you do not want any complaints. Okay, and then the next one is actually a really, really popular one. When can I start making the funeral flowers before the day of the funeral? Now, I, I say buy your flowers two days before and try and make them the day before. If you've got, lo if you've got loads to do like I have, so it's Wednesday today and these are actually for Friday, but I've got a lot to do for this funeral, so I've started them two days before, which is absolutely fine. If you're getting the flowers in fresh, they will last. So the flowers will last up to seven days to um, ten days. So I always want to make sure all my flowers are fresh. I have worked in florists in the past that basically put their flowers in that have only got like a couple of days left in them. I really, really don't like that. I think that all the flowers should be fresh. All the quality is exactly the same and you are good to go and you know you're going to get happy customers so if you're making them a couple of days before it really really doesn't matter so don't worry about it i always like to i prefer making them two days before so then i know if i've not got enough of something i can then order some more to come the next day and it's all good and it takes the stress off me a little bit for sure so yeah so all your tributes that you're going to do uh, gonna have a water source anyway apart from like a sheath which is a flat bouquet I would um, well you can make that two days before as well just make sure the ends are snipped and put in some lukewarm water and kept in a cool place and you're good to go they would all be perfect for the day so don't worry about that so just make sure that they're all ready uh, for the morning before you go and send them to the funeral directors and I wouldn't worry too much about it just as long as your foam is nicely soaked properly soaked everything will be okay so literally do not stress about that and then another question I get asked is with my with funeral sprays do you have to cut the flower stems at a certain length um no not particularly as long as they are cohesive to the foliage base that you don't say a four foot coffin spray so your foliage is going to be the same size as a four foot so make sure that say if you've got a rose that your rose is the length of the edge of the piece of the foliage at the end if that makes sense just don't make it too high because it needs to fit in the hearse and if they put it in and it's way too high it will go on the top of the hearse but I wouldn't overthink that either it's absolutely fine as long as your flowers align with the, your foliage base it is good to go and we do have an in-depth tutorial about how to make coffin sprays we've got a couple so we'll leave them down in the description as well and those are done so now we are on to cutting the chrysanthemum heads off so we can stick them into the letters to create a white base. So I usually use three packets of white Bonita chrysanthemums. You can use Euro as well or Baratica, but these are my favourite because with Euro with the Euro chrysanthemums they're really temperamental, they can come really small and you end up using more. And the price of chrysanthemums have doubled and yeah so it's making my life very very difficult so the bigger the chrysanthemum head the better and it will fill your letters out better as well 
So yeah, I use three packs. I've got five in each packet. If you get them from the supermarket, they do look quite similar to these. They'll be not as good a quality. So these are florist grades are the best grades and then supermarkets get the less of a grade. So that is how we uh, differentiate. So basically, if you haven't watched our previous tutorials, I just cut the length down to about two fingers width so that's a bit long so I'll just cut that off a little bit and then once you've gauged your length don't put your fingers anywhere near it and then you can basically just cut them as you go now I do like to cut these beforehand because it's then just easier to pick and stick into the funeral tribute now if you are spraying these I normally get asked what spray paint that I use so I've got three different types here. So I have got the Pro Florist. I have got, well, the Spring Pro Florist, that's the brand, Spring. And then we've got the Oasis Easy Color and just the ordinary Oasis brand. Now, this is my absolute favorite. So when I'm spraying flowers and foliage, it doesn't dry them out at all so sometimes when you're spraying hydrangeas a different color you can come back and like some of the petals have died a little bit because the sprays killed them basically this doesn't do it it's super duper easy uh, it is water-based um so it doesn't kill the flowers or anything like that and it takes about 10 minutes to dry this is just a godsend now i do like to spray my foliage gold as well and normally for my wholesalers they rarely do actually have um the normal oasis products in the gold color and my favorite gold color is the 24 karat gold now this one is my second go-to but it takes absolutely ages to dry it like smothers the flowers and um, foliage is in paint and it does look nice at the end and the flowers don't really tend to dry, dry, uh, die but it just smothers them with paint it literally takes about an hour to dry and then this one is sort of similar so this takes ages to dry as well and then when i go and pick up the foliage when it is dry it is really really sticky as well so that's the Spring Pro Florist. So if you were gonna spray chrysanthemums, any other color, please make sure you get the normal Oasis spray if you can, it's just super duper easy. So anyway, let's carry on with this. Okay, so I've cut three packets worth now and that's all gonna fit onto the dad. But these are having sprays on. So I basically, just with my finger, just make sure that I put a little like rectangle on there so i know that's where the spray is going that doesn't need to be based so next question is um how do i price my flowers up so basically when you buy your flowers you normally get them from your wholesalers and it's without the vat so when you get your invoice look how much they cost you add the vat to it and then put your markup on there. So most commonly florist markup are like 50 to 70%. So if you've got a 50% markup, you need to then go to your invoice. You then need to add up how much each stem costs you, add the vat onto it, and then double it. So that will give you what you need. And then with the sundries, and I have been asked before what sundries are. Now, sundries are anything that's contributing to your product that isn't a flower, basically. So a sundry would be this dad base. The sundry would be this spray. The sundry would be these moss pins, okay? So anything that's not a direct flower. And I price these up because it's not really adding any value to the flower arrangement or bouquet i only add a 50 percent markup on this so this dad letter tribute at wholesale cost cost me about 10 pounds so then i will charge 20 pounds for it so you just need to include all that into the costs as well otherwise if you don't it's going to be eating into your profits and you won't be making much money on those 
Okay, so I've now done all the flower basing and basically what I've done, I've covered the whole of the oasis and done lines. So a line around the outside, then another line, then another line and so on and so forth, whatever direction that you're going in. And then make sure all your moss pins are covered as well and you can't see any of the oasis apart from where you are going to be putting your sprays. So with my sprays, I like to base them first. So the exposed oasis are based in leather leaf or any ferns that you can find in your garden and then just make a triangle shape like so. And then I'll do this for all three. Okay, and then, so I'll go on to my next question whilst I'm doing this. The next question is, how do I store my flowers? Well, basically I live in England, so it is pretty much cold all the time. Apart from in the summer, we can get really, really, really hot spells. Well, we think they're really hot. They're probably like 32 degrees Celsius, because we do Celsius in England. I don't really know how much that is in Fahrenheit, but to us that is really, really hot because we don't really use um, air conditioning or anything because there's no need for it. I mean, some people do, but <laughs> we normally have heaters more than air conditioning units. But so I just store them in the studio overnight and they're absolutely fine. They're at the good temperature. They're not too hot. They're not too cold. Um, but if it does get too hot, I do have um, a portable air conditioning unit and I'll just put that on in the studio and it just cools the studio down a little bit. If it does get too cold, uh, like freezing cold, then this can really affect the flowers. If the flowers do freeze, they will die. So what I'll do, I normally just have the heater on during the day if it's really, really freezing. And then at the night time when it gets absolutely freezing beyond belief, I'll leave the heater on all day and leave it on till like before I go to bed and come and switch it off and then wake up really early in the morning or sometimes I'll purposely come down at like 4 or 5am just to switch the heater on to make sure the flowers are okay. Um, but if you are in a hot country, I know that uh, some florists they have fridges, so like purposely made fridges or you can just get air conditioning units um, off Amazon. I've seen floristry YouTube videos where uh, people in the US, for instance, have these portable air con units and you can switch the temperature up and down to be perfect for your flowers. Um, but yeah, as long as they're nicely stored somewhere safe, where the door is closed as well, because there was, when I was training, I heard this story. <laughs> oh God, I don't know what I would do if this happened to me. But um, a florist that basically converted their shed into a sort of floristry studio, and she left the door open at the night time, and she had a wedding the next day. She just came in to finish the last bits of the wedding before she delivered them. And a fox had got into the shed because she hadn't left the she hadn't locked the door up properly, basically, and it had been left open. And the fox had basically chewed all the flowers and eaten them, basically. And she didn't know what to do. So I always make sure that my doors are securely locked. But yeah. So as long as they're all nice, safe, and secure, then it's absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, I've done my base sprays now, then I'm going to add the roses in. So, with the sprays, I charge £10 per spray. That includes the labour of me making them, includes three roses at £3 each, and the foliage as well. So I'm going to use two white roses. So I'm going to put one at the top here. And by the way, I'm taking the guard petals off, so they're, they're the petals that basically protect the inner petals. And obviously they come from different countries, etc., and have been transported. So they're going to have bruising on, they're a natural product, so it's all good. So I basically just cut my stems down, probably three or four fingers long, take the guard petals off, and then I'll put the red one into the middle. 
And then I shall carry on with the other two sprays and then that one's done. And then after this, I'm going, not, going to go on to the granddad. So fun times for me. Yeah, if you just, um, basically if they're really, really fresh they're, and they're closed and in a bird, just basically just blow on them a little bit and it opens them. See, so it's opened a bit more now. So I'll put one this side and one the other side. And then I'm just trying to think of any other questions that you may want to know or what I wanted to know. So I basically work on my own, so I can only take on a certain amount of work a day. So you really need to plan. So I would always make sure that you know what you're doing two days in advance. So in your diary, always make sure that you've got the flowers ordered at least two days in advance. You know what you're doing. And also, oh yes, lilies. If you're doing anything with lilies, you need to order your lilies two weeks before, uh, two weeks, a week before, because Normally, if your customer or family are having a lily spray, they want the lilies open. And if you're in a cold country like me, it takes absolutely ages for them to open. So always make sure that if you've got a lily spray, please make sure that you are checking your orders thoroughly. Um, see what you've got the following week, week etc. So if you've got any lilies, because you don't want to basically be ordering your flower stock for funerals the day before and you realise that you've got a lily spray. And I'm not going to lie, that's happened to me before. Ooh, I'm just being honest. And I had a massive panic, but I managed to get some from my wholesalers, like older ones that had opened more, and they were perfect. Um, so yeah, I think that's everything that I can think of at the moment. If you've got any other questions, just leave them in the comment box down below or follow us on Instagram at Gems Floral Studio and I love answering all your questions. I get loads of DMs of questions and I just absolutely love that people trust and want to know advice from me. I find it really, really lovely and like because I'm passionate about it and I, I will know the questions that you want to know as well. Um, I just love absolutely answering them and helping people. Uh, even from like social media aspects, how to grow your business, just literally just ask me because I wish that I had somebody that I could just go and ask and don't worry I am really friendly so <laughs> well I think I am anyway, I'd like to think so but so anyway um, this is finished now, I'll turn it around Ooh. I just need to put the legs on this and it's good to go so I hope you really enjoyed this video guys and I hope I did cover a lot of topics uh, that you wanted to know. If there is anything else again just leave a comment down below um, and I'll see you in the next video. Oh and subscribe!